Good evening, folks. Glad you're with us for WVLT News. I'm Ted Hall. This tornado leveling neighborhoods, mostly in Middle Tennessee. Now people are just starting to get their bearings. Many finding out friends and family didn't survive the night. Putnam County, the hardest hit, the deadliest storm on record for them. At least 19 are dead. As we mentioned, some buildings still haven't been searched. A church has had to serve as a morgue for now. Parts of Nashville, unrecognizable. They were hit by an EF3, likely winds of 160 miles an hour plus. Some had an EF2, but still, powerful storms rolling through the state. Here's a look at Mount Juliet in Wilson County. They were hit by a, a tornado with 150, 160 mile an hour winds. We have several crews in some of the hardest hit areas. We're going to start with our Amanda Harris. She is outside of Cookville in Putnam County. Just absolute heartbreak there, Amanda. Ted, indeed, I uh, everywhere you look, somebody is crying. They're hugging their neighbors, their family or their friends. Authorities say that the debris field from this tornado was so large and you can see evidence of that behind me. Just take a look. There is debris strewn everywhere. You can see this home, an elderly couple lived up here. See that blue wall? They were behind that blue wall in their bedroom. They survived this tornado. Kind of amazing to see that. One of the only surviving structures here, one of the last standing walls, and they were behind that. We know that at least 16 people have now died in Putnam County. Officials, unfortunately, believe that that number could go up. They're asking any family members who believe that a loved one may have died in the tornado to go to a temporary morgue at a church to identify loved ones. Nothing is more telling than this home over here, completely pushed off of its foundation. The foundation actually to the left, you can see those winds actually picking it up and pushing it several feet. And then the image that just takes your breath away. When you look and you see that line of the tornado, the path on the left side, you see those homes still standing on the right side homes completely leveled, just a devastating image to look at. This is Carlin Smith's home, and you have to wonder, how does somebody survive something like this? Well, the short answer to that is, Carlin, you weren't here last night. Carlin no. said he had a bad feeling, and you went to a different home. You walk back this morning, and you see what daylight brings, and you yeah. say to yourself, what? I didn't know what to say. I just was numb. I just don't. But everything, lost everything, so I didn't know, you know what to really what to say, it just, I don't know, what, I'm still numb right now. What saved your life? What was that feeling that told you to leave before this hit? Well, I really believe God was telling me, go, go, go. He said his family got the warning that the tornado was near, ran to these basement steps, got in there just in time. He said his oldest son last one to shut the door and that door then fell on top of him. The family was trapped for about an hour before crews could rescue them. You see such resolve in the face of hardship and nothing really shows that resolve until you see a sign out here that we really want to make sure we showed you guys. They painted this just today, it says we are strong on the outside of their wall. This is Ryan Meyer's home. The second that he found out that his family was safe, do you know what he did? He ran right across the street to help his neighbor who was in need, a woman trapped under this home as it was collapsing. The house collapsed in on her. We tried to suck him into the basement at the same time and it collapsed on top of her. You had to walk away from this family, trying your hardest, but not being successful. How did you feel in those moments? I know these people will, it's, it's horrible. Her daddy was one of my good friends I worked for her for 11 years. And how do you, how do you walk away from somebody who's trying to save your life? He walked away with so much grief and so much guilt, even though he did everything that he could. And for so many here, it's it really is personal because they all know each other in some way or another. A few minutes after Ryan and I talked, um, I looked over at the home where the woman died and I saw a family member there and I went over and spoke with her and she said it was her cousin who had passed away and um, we promised that we weren't going to share the name. She wasn't sure if every family member knew the news yet, but she said that the victim had at least a few moments to communicate with family before she passed away. 
to either get a text message or a phone call out to her mother, you know, stating it's not looking good, I love you, and just giving her final peace out. Red Cross starting to make its way into some of these Putnam County neighborhoods. This is not the only Tennessee County that has been devastated by weather overnight. Morgan County suffered an EF0 tornado. Here's Gwendolyn Ducree. From down power lines to uprooted trees behind me, folks here in Morgan County are getting to work this afternoon repairing from that tornado. We trailed a group of National Weather Service officials who say winds got up to 85 miles per hour. You can see that's strong enough to split through any size tree, damage some barns, and leave a pile of mess. A lot of utility poles look just like this, snapped in half. They're hanging in trees. They're all over the road. They're blocking driveways. They're on top of homes. They're on top of cars. Utility crews tell us this is not a job that's going to be done overnight. They think it's going to take months for everything to be cleaned up, for service to be fully restored. We are in the very beginning phases of this. We've also seen uh, a lot of insurance agents going home to home, but they say the process is slowed down because they have to wait for authorities to go in and clear a house and make sure that there's nobody inside who might need help or who has passed away. Of course, the National Weather Service is going to be out here, boots on the ground, 8 o'clock in the morning, surveying the damage. We hope to know then just how strong this tornado was. I can tell you I've covered a lot of tornadoes in my time. This one's not rated yet, but the team from Nashville is out here. This is worse than a lot of the EF3s I've seen closer to on par with the EF4 when you see some of the structural damage to the foundation and the way the bolts are purely ripped out. This neighborhood has been hit so incredibly hard. Home after home after home is suffering some sort of damage, if not totally destroyed, which is really tough to see, especially considering that these are brick homes. Some of them are two story brick homes. They're not mobile homes. So that makes you wonder what was the exact force of this tornado. I've been talking to the National Weather Service who rates these tornadoes for the past 24 hours, specifically the head of the survey team. This neighborhood that's behind us is called Echo Valley Estates. That's where some of the worst of the damage is. Casey, hard to believe that this is not even the worst of what we're seeing. What she tells me is, quote, this is at least an EF3 tornado. They may be upgrading it to an EF4. If that's the case, that would be among the strongest uh, tornadoes that we see. Watching a state police helicopter fly over the scene here in Putnam County. The airspace has been active all afternoon, all day long, as different military helicopters, state official helicopters come into the area to try to see from the sky exactly what they're dealing with. It's actually the same parent storm that started the Mississippi River uh, just a couple of nights ago, Casey. Same one that brought the tornado to Morgan County. Same one that brought the tornado uh, warning to Knox County. It caused all that damage around Nashville on the front lines. We talked to search and rescue crews doing everything they can to help knock down that list of missing people tonight. Let's see what we got here. Hundreds of volunteers scouring trees and creeks. We're searching every tree, every branch, every nook and cranny. Uh, there's a lot to go through. A wave of destruction meets a sea of volunteers. Hunter Belvin is a Tennessee Tech student hoping to find answers for people missing their loved ones. I got really kind of really emotional, honestly. There was people calling in on the radio. They were asking, hey, I'm looking for my sister in Baxter. Have you heard anything about Baxter's location? Hey, I'm looking for my brother in Sparta. I know his house is gone, but I don't know where he's at. And it was very moving stuff. A list of 36 people missing in the morning quickly dwindles as the community now searches for a new norm. The youth pastor's daughter is still missing and the rest of the family is being treated in different hospitals in the area. 18 people died in Putnam County. Four-year-old Hattie Collins did not survive the storm that left her parents hospitalized. Amanda Cole, she was just 34. She died protecting six-year-old Dawson Curtis. She would just, uh, you know, if you saw her, you saw Dawson many times on holidays and various stuff. You know, after they got done with their family functions, uh, she'd bring them around to ours. Just one of those, a couple of those little boys in her life that uh, she was taking care of, um, but she just had so many that she was uh, affecting. But little Dawson, that was a special one. That's Amanda's uncle, Mark Farley. Their family devastated after not only losing Amanda, but also Dawson. They say he was a part of the family too. The tornado tearing down homes and everything in its path. 
costing the lives of 18 people, including Susan Kohler and her husband. Sue is most newer, a longtime manager at Walmart who customers just adored. She was a beautiful person and she was good and happy and you know, she had just gotten remarried. In the last few minutes, Ted, we've seen search activity pick up right behind me here. We now have the National Guard working in one of the hardest hit subdivisions in Putnam County. Crews here on the ground will tell you there are two subdivisions that were essentially obliterated. We're standing right on the edge of one of them. They are going house to house or what was a house at one time looking through the rubble for signs of people who might need help or in the most unfortunate of circumstances victims in this case we're in a neighborhood on hensley drive in this neighborhood driveways they lead to homes that no longer exist you don't hear any noises there are no people nobody's out here working besides maybe the chirp of a frog we're really only hearing home alarms and car alarms that continue to go on and off. As you take a look up over here, you can see that path of destruction left behind from the tornado. Homes completely leveled. And tonight, when you look at some of the sidewalks, you see this X's marking the areas that search and rescue crews have gone through. That search and rescue is going to continue well into the night and tomorrow. I found the Holy Bible here that everything beside it was destroyed, but there's not a page gone in this Bible. It's fully intact, it's you a, say? It's a family Bible, and we'd like to find out whose family Bible it was. And as crews continue to search tonight, an officer just walked by again with another arm full of Bibles. And this one has a name in it, presented to Mary Evelyn Randolph in 1946. And they said, here, please take these mementos that we're finding, family Bibles. You guys have a better shot of getting them back with their rightful owners than we do. It's hard to believe that it's been a little more than 24 hours since these storms hit. People were literally crawling out of their homes. Some of their homes completely flattened. Unfortunately, 18 people did not make it out of those storms alive. And this morning, we are still waiting to hear from 38 missing people. Officials here are hoping that cell phone service is part of that reason we haven't heard from them. But there are also lots of people at a church here locally, families who have reported missing loved ones waiting to hear hopefully some good news. If you are searching for a loved one this morning, you can call the county helpline at 931-646-4630. Now the National Weather Service says this tornado touched down around 2 a.m. Central Time between the city limits of Cookville and Baxter. That was around 3 o'clock our time in Knoxville. Tima has now declared a state of emergency. You were one of the first people on scene yesterday morning. Tell me a little bit about what that was like as the sun came up. We were basically watching these people come out of their homes for the first time since sunrise and mm -hmm. seeing it firsthand with them. A lot of despair, a lot of sorrow, loss, confusion, tears and hugs. I felt scared because my wife ran into the bathroom and I was right behind her in the basement and we were getting ready to shut the door. And before we could take 10 or 15 steps, it, it started and was over. Now, Ronnie told me that after they were able to get to safety and after the tornado blew through, he was able to go and help different neighbors and make sure that they were okay, get to different people. When we spoke at the time, it almost seemed like he was still in shock. This was probably yesterday early morning when we interviewed him. Couldn't have been past really eight or nine o'clock in the morning when we were talking with him uh, and I think he was still in disbelief over what he saw. And I think one of the reoccurring things that we keep hearing from people who lost everything, they heard the tornado go through, they went for cover, they came out and the first thing they checked on were their neighbors. That was the first thing they wanted to do is see how they could help the people that they love around them. Just less than a mile away from ground zero, all of that destruction is this, Double Springs Church of Christ collecting everything they can to help out Everything from water bottles to clothes, those essential items you don't even think about until you lose your house and you lose everything inside. Red Cross has laid out several cots here. Now, we're not showing any of the family members who've been displaced, but we have learned that 16 of them are staying here at this church. And at first, they were really in need of just a small things to get through the night. At some point, they were using these stuffed animals for pillows, we've been told, to now Walmart has donated more than 50 new pillows here that you can see laid across these cots. It's just the small things that folks were needing to be comfortable.
kind of an organized chaos here, but they have separated everything into piles, and that is what officials have told them to do, separating between wood, what can be burned, and any hazard, hazardous material that needs to be carried away. And I talked to some of these volunteers. They're from church groups. Some of them are from Tennessee Tech. Some of them lost their homes themselves, and they wanted to come out here and do something because they said, you know what, they're safe. This is just a really incredible sight to see the volunteer spirit in full force. Devastating sites like this one here behind me are starting to change a little bit as volunteers come out here and start picking up the pieces. One of those groups is the Monterey Lions Club. They're based out of Putnam County as well. What makes this group interesting is that they have covered 68 disasters in the past 13 years. You've covered some of the biggest natural disasters, not just in the country, but around the world. Hurricane Maria, one of the most significant topics of your reporting. You've seen some really bad stuff and you've seen the way that people react to these tragedies. Is there anything unique or special in the way that Tennesseans have reacted to this tornado? There was a resilience that seemed to bond them together. Cookville Regional Medical Center saw 82 patients with tornado related injuries. None will pay a penny to CRMC. The chief financial officer for CRMC says the hospital will bill patients insurance, but they'll write off some of the costs. Putnam County, the folks around Cookville, trying to rebuild and trying to clean up. It's going to take months, but extra help's on the way from the federal government. Your presence here reminds us that people all across the country care about what's happening here, so we're grateful. President Donald Trump visiting Putnam County and Nashville today, meeting with leaders, families and seeing the damage. We showed you at the start of the show, President Trump visiting Tennessee today, surveying all the incredible damage in a couple of sections of our state. And the president joining in with Governor Bill Lee and other local leaders at one of the hardest hit areas, which is Putnam County. Yeah, President Trump signing off on an expedited disaster aid to the state. That means they're going to speed that money and get here quicker, saying people will have as much as they need to rebuild. Cleanup, though, will take months. It'll be interesting to go back next year and see what still has hasn't been done. Trump and leaders taking a moment to acknowledge the devastation there. This is real devastation, like you'll never see, hopefully again. This was about as big a tornado as you can have. It was 50 miles long, which is extraordinarily long. Hallways are filling up at this community center with survivors and volunteers helping with lost and found stations and putting together disaster care packages. Across the street, students at Avery Trace Middle School are doing what they say is their part, writing thank you letters to first responders and even the president of the United States after his visit. Thoughts and flashbacks are piling up here in Middle Tennessee. For this dad of 10, his reality is settling in from that early morning when a tornado changed his life forever. The suction of it pulled me back downstairs to, to the, the living room area. And when that happened, I saw my wife going across the floor on her, on her, she was on her belly. Mike Phillips and his family were hiding inside what used to be their home. While he and his wife were trapped, he asked his son to check on all the kids. So I heard him holler and I just knew, I knew they'd found her, but I knew it wasn't good. Their 13 year old foster daughter, Bridget, didn't make it. She, she, she made us better parents, better people. You know, just, there's just no words to describe her personality and the kind of young lady she, she, that she was. Phillip's life is upside down now. There's little room to think of a spreading virus. It ain't even crossed our minds. I mean, we're still digging through this. Helping clean up are the many volunteers. Chris Zitzman with Christ in Action says the coronavirus isn't first thought, but he's not ignoring it either. We're, we're paying careful attention to our personal hygiene and making sure that we are, you know, washing hands and, and just we're in contact with a lot of different hazards out here in the field. And so we do that anyway. And so we're, we're able to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. So the work continues. The Bible tells us that one day we'll understand, we'll know why. But right now it's not meant. But I, I, I never question God's judgment or why, only he knows why.
In Putnam County, Gwendolyn Dupree, WBLT News. It's strange to think that someone's entire life, their whole love story. So like <laughs> that could fit in a box so small. Corey and Lauren Farmer met in grad school in Florida. Now, seven years later, What's this? Oh, here's some of the dress. They're married. And like most people, Lauren intended to keep her gown. When you're getting married, it's everything, right? And you pick out the dress and it's your dream. But on Super Tuesday, a nightmare storm swept that dream dress away. Wood snapping debris flying sparking a search for the missing gown and I found a picture on Facebook of my wedding dress pictures on social media proved the gown weathered the storm tracking it down hasn't been so easy somebody found it but they were told to leave it there because it wasn't their property and that's totally understandable um, we haven't been able to find it but their search led them to discover something they never intended to find good neighbors willing to help it's not about the item lost. It's about the community willing to go search for the item. A lesson in survival, what it means to be a good neighbor. A lesson so big it will never fit in a box. And what community truly is. And there is suffering and there's lots of suffering, but it is about building from there and having each other and getting through. God is getting us through the suffering. In Putnam County, Robert Grant, WVLT News. I have one, my son in my left arm and my uh, little girl in my right arm. Those same raw emotions from nearly two months ago still rush over Eric and Faith Johnson and their family after they lost their home and neighbors to a deadly tornado. Our three-year-old daughter, uh, she remembers every detail. It's nothing short of a miracle. They walked away from their crushed home. I ejected all of us from the house. Seven weeks later, they had a roof over their heads and their physical wounds had healed, but something was still missing. Bella is the uh, miniature Australian Shepherd that was actually, she got under, she was underneath our bed. March 3rd was the last time they saw both of their dogs. One didn't make it, but they always thought their seven-year-old dog Bella did. Confirmation came with a call. She said, can you be here in 15 minutes? We have to hurry. Their church member, Sarah Romine, found Bella just four miles from where they lived. She caged herself between fences. How in the world did you find Bella? So Karen Rotato, who was one of my friends from church, he called me on Thursday afternoon, and she said, Sarah, Bella's here. I know it's her. It was good news, but too soon for a reunion. I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just jump in here. If she bites me, she bites me in. I jumped in over and she just literally come running from the other end and just, just started licking me in the face. She was dirty and had lost 20 pounds. And where is she now? She's actually laying right here on the floor next to us. <laughs> can she I see her? She won't let us leave her. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you can see she's better now. Getting Bella back was the final missing piece to our family that we could finally start to ask you. I could, we could move on now. In Knoxville, Gwendolyn Ducree, WVLT News. A young couple and their toddler are among the dead in Putnam County. Joshua and Aaron Kimberlins were so proud when their little boy Sawyer learned to walk. Friends speak highly of the UT fans. Now thousands of people are helping with the family's burial. The tornado that claimed that young family is part of a storm system now called the country's deadliest day of tornadoes in seven years. We have crews there. We're going to hear from them soon. Good evening. Glad you're with us. For WVLT News, I'm Ted Hall. And I'm Amanda Hara. Thanks for joining us. Three people are still missing. Countless others now flooding Middle Tennessee to help. One of the victims identified today, Dawson Curtis. His father, Terry, also died in the storm. His family posted on Facebook, it's never goodbye. It's see you later. I can't tell you how many people stopped to tell me about Jessica Clark yesterday or how many people have since emailed me or written me some sort of story about her. She's the woman who was trapped under her collapsing home. The same woman, a neighbor told us that he tried to save. Her cousin describes her as vibrant, full of joy, a city employee and active on the fair board. Jessica also sold Mary Kay makeup and seemed to make a friend in everyone that she met. Her cousin says Jessica was able to use her phone to say goodbye to family before she passed away. As so many search for little family treasures. Three and four inches under dirt and finding stuff. 
Cheryl Minat is hunting for something that could bring hope. It wasn't anything special other than to her. And uh, we would love to have it for whenever she regains consciousness. Cheryl is looking for her granddaughter's lovey. It's just hard to believe it would be here, but it, you know. Her granddaughter, Harper, just turned two years old. She's precious. She's just as cute as she can be. Sweet. Harper is in a medically induced coma at East Tennessee Children's. She underwent surgery after suffering a head injury during the tornado. We're very, very concerned about her. Waking up from a coma with lovey would bring a little peace to a family that lost it all. Oh, it just, I had seen some pictures and people have been here and sent us some snapshots, but it, it, it's unbelievable. It's just, it's unbelievable. As Cheryl searches the rubble, the most valuable thing here didn't cost much at all. God had to have put a hand over them during that most, because when they got up, there was nothing around them. Now they're turning to God for help. All we want is for everybody who knows anything about this story to pray for our Harper. Just we just want we just want complete recovery for our little girl. In Putnam County, Robert Grant, WVLT News. I wanted to be here, but it's been a great experience. Uh, really, all of you. Seriously. This is probably one of my favorite stories of the year so far. Some absolutely incredible news from East Tennessee Children's Hospital this afternoon. Harper Minot a two-year-old tornado victim from Cookville, released from the hospital today. After more than a month, she was hurt in the Super Tuesday tornado that hit Putnam County. Here she is, finally getting to leave. As she made her way out of the hospital, there were healthcare workers lining the hallways, lining the roundabout outside of the hospital, greeting her, cheering her on, all the doctors and nurses who have cared for her, along, of course, with her mother, her father, and her six-month-old brother. We are so happy that that family finally gets to leave the hospital.